Welcome to the Art of the Intuitive Mind. I'm your host, Winnie. I hope that you find something in this session that enables you to connect to your own truth. Okay, take two, and I'm here today with Shelley Klammer. Um, I've, I've got my got my mouth around my words now. Um, it's lovely to have you here today, Shelley. Thank you very much for coming along to the Art of the Intuitive Mind. Mm, um, could, for those who don't know you or haven't met you before, although I suspect a lot of people have, have met you before, uh, could you tell us a little about yourself and your work in the world? Mm-hmm, for sure. Well, I am a, a depth oriented psychotherapist and I support women to access their deeper self, say their unconscious mind, subconscious mind um, and intuition uh, through creativity, through what I call spontaneous creativity. Mm, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And whereabouts are you for Ripley? Because I'm in Bristol in England. Yes, and I'm in Canada um, in the province of Alberta. <laughs> Marvellous. Yes. Um, so before we get started into intuition a bit more, uh, let's share our joyful objects. So today I have picked up this tiny cup, which I uh, my dad gave to me a long time ago. He actually gave me two for Christmas, but didn't tell me that they were fragile. <laughs> so one of them got broken before I opened oh, it. Wow. But it's just such a treasure to me. It's by um, a potter called Vanessa Conyers, who's um, in England, I think. But I just I love it. It's just it always, it's just so ditty and delightful and colourful and all sorts of joy. So oh, beautiful. <laughs> love that. I love that. I used to collect uh, teacups too. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Just at the thrift store because I love patterns so much, yeah. right? So they're just. I had so just beautiful. endless, endless teacups and saucers. Um, they're, so <laughs> they're the designs, aren't they? They're just absolutely yes. beautiful. So. Just beautiful, oh. yes. How come you so, stopped? Did you get too many? Did you stop? Oh, yes. I actually let them go, unfortunately. I've had to mm. I let go of a lot of my fascinations and collections over the years because I've moved a lot. And right. um, But um, it's funny. I, I always regret letting them go, in a oh. sense, you know? Creating <laughs> space for something else. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I've collected many, many different things over the years. Um, yeah, sea glass was I was obsessed yeah. with that for a while. And, you know, now I'm into seashells. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yes, yeah, I've yes. got a few few seashells, but I try to just collect the really tiny ones. So I just don't know oh. too many. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, do you want to see my object? I'd love to. <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, it's actually a sketchbook and um, it ties into our, our topic. So it's a really cheap sketchbook. I pay $4 for, for these at my local dollar store. But this is a practice um, that I have been doing for 25 years. I just show up in my sketchbook for literally five minutes and I use a ballpoint pen, um, just, you know, any ballpoint pen. And I just do a scribble and I kind of ask myself a question. So it's kind of like an oracle for me. And I thought it would be fun to show you. I've just started a new one. And I just buy many, many of these sketchbooks. I've got one upstairs. I've got one downstairs. So I don't have an excuse. So I feel like I get something creative done, um, you know, every day. And then my deeper practices are more around watercolor painting and collage and that kind of thing. But um, this is just something fast that I've been doing every day. And so it just kind of looks like this. And so I just did this the other day. It was just a scribble before I did one of my therapy sessions. And I just always write a little question, like, I wonder what this means, right? So I sort of said, heart expanding. That's sort of what it felt like to me. And so I've been doing these for 25 years. So that's, I just thought I'd share it because it feels related to intuition and creativity and how actually easy it can be. That's incredible as well. Like what a practice to have been doing that for that long. I always say to people that that's one of the things that I struggle with is to so like, I guess it's finding the right practices, isn't it? So it's finding the right thing that I then actually stick to, or maybe I'm just not meant to be someone who does the, who does the same thing, yeah. But, but yeah. That's yeah. It, um, yeah. I, I, I love to explore different practices. And so I always have something else on the side. And so I've done mandalas and, mm-hmm. you know, lots of different collage and different painting techniques and so on. But um, just, I wanted to find something that I could just do without mm-hmm. excuse every day so even if I don't get to art I have touched into my inner world and yeah. in some way you There's know something about the simplicity of it isn't it that, that yeah. means that you can there is no excuse because it's so you know you do, yes so yeah. minimal minimal materials and easy to do yeah I think yeah I uh yeah I think I shall take take that on board <laughs> so 
many things though. Doing all these interviews, there's just so many fabulous things that people have shared. And it's like, oh my God, I want to do everything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I know I do like a lot of variety too, but it's just it's, it's just interesting. I think um, when we're interested in tapping into our intuition, just having one little thing, you know, some people yeah. will pull a tarot card a day or do something like that. But um, that's yeah. my my little oracle. <laughs> Saying about intuition there, it's like, it, it's, that's exactly it. It's like, that, and it, yes, it's like fantastic, all these people sharing all these things, but it's like discerning what's the thing for you or trying things out so that yes. you're like, oh, okay, I'm feeling drawn to that thing and, and knowing. Yeah. So. That's right. What's the thing for you? That's that's it yeah so let's let's talk about intuition then so what for you what does intuition what does intuition mean to you Mm. well I think it's um it's something that's very simple you know if if you're relaxed you can easily touch into your intuition and I think the key is relaxation because I think when we're in fear or fight flight those you know sort of uh doubt, anger, grief, all of those sort of really tumultuous kinds of feelings. It's very hard to touch into intuition. And so I find a lot of my work as a psychotherapist is to support women to kind of clear the the gunk, the the muck mm-hmm. away from from the the clear intuition. It's just hard to um, get a clear sense of a life direction. But ultimately, you know, it is very simple if you're relaxed. Yeah. that's how I see it yeah I it's so it's so true and I think that like the it's the I've so I've built a around my creative practice I've built like a ritual that I start with and it's in that it's about like bringing my nervous system down like yes. relaxing and kind of opening into the space if I come in and I'm all over the place then what I create goes wrong and I also don't don't interact with the page in the same way and I kind of like don't feel as it's just all different but um but yeah I read something the other day that was saying about intuition is that when you can tell when it's intuition because it's like a an expanding feeling instead of a like closing down or a drawing in and the closing down drawing in is is when you're in fear and you can't you can't do both at the same time can you so it's sort of it makes sense yes. that you that the relaxation because we all know that when you relax everything just feels softer more open. everything <laughs> softens exactly it softens it opens yeah. up and then we have access to our higher self and so I do see intuition as sort of access to the higher self too so you know in our in our body systems we, we all live in a body and so there's if you think about eastern medicine they sort of identify seven chakras and I I understand the eighth chakra to be the one just above the head and so when you think about that um, to access that because we live in a human body, the body has to soften, it has to relax, our heart has to be open, uh, very hard to access uh, intuition. Like you say, we feel scattered, we feel either hyper-focused or, or unfocused. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, to get into that really soft, quiet place is really ideal. Yeah. Oh, it feels like a, that's a, it's a lovely space to be in as well, isn't it? It's so much better than being in, in the scattered frantic space. So that in yeah. itself of uh, making a practice of of coming into calm every day is is a great great thing to do yes absolutely um so in for you when you sort of experience intuition from this from this delightful space do you you know how different people experience it differently and some people describe having you know like a gut feeling or some people say they might hear they actually hear hear some somebody or you know they hear a voice or hear words but for you what's that what's that experience like Right. Well, you're talking about various different things. Like I think of gut instinct as kind of like the animal instinct, that's sort of the instinct of our body. And that's sort of hooked into our nervous system. So, you know, it tells us what's the right street to walk down and what, you know, what feels safe and what doesn't feel safe and what feels right and wrong. Our body gives us really strong messages. And um, uh, then you were talking about the clairs, like the clairvoyance or hearing something that sort of, to me, kind of comes from, you know, the the, the higher ear, the third eye, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, how I've always experienced intuition is I tend to kind of look up and and sense up. And so um, that happened to me uh, many years ago, t- well, 
yeah, about 25 years ago when I started opening up and doing these intuitive drawings, um, I was very closed, you know, in my 20s. And I was very focused on the outside, which a lot of 20 year olds are like, I wasn't like a natural intuitive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just um, was very focused. I was a design and art student. And I was really focused on what people thought of my work. And my work was very calculated, almost logical, in a sense, very designed and, and so on. And then I experienced uh, what I call a crisis induced spiritual opening where many members of my family died in a short period of time. And I could feel my head open up the top of my crown. I felt it sort of just, it sort of um, just opened. And I all of a sudden got this holistic, great big picture for my life where um, my life prior to that opening was very small. And so that opening lasted about six months and I made a, a ton of big changes. Like I Wow. I left my marriage. I found my life partner. I sold my house. I moved to the mountains. <laughs> you wow. know, I, I just started living this really um, very creative life um, and made very, very rapid changes during that period. And then my nervous system kind of came back online when things settled and I sort of settled into my normal human kind of emotional set point. And, um, you know, that's why I'm so interested in shadow work. Cause I was like, Oh gosh, what is in the way of this? Why can't I experience this mm -hmm. every day, every minute? Like I did for that, that quite extended period of time when I made those big changes. So, um, I now I'm very volitional about remembering to open up my, mm -hmm. what I would think of as my crown chakra, but back then I didn't have the language for it, but it just felt like my head opened up. Wow. And that's when my nervous system experience. Like... Yes, it was incredible. And when my nervous system sort of came back online and it came back through fear and worry and oh, I have to make a living and mm -hmm. all of these kinds of practical concerns, survival concerns, really. Yeah. I could actually feel the just sort of the door on top of my head just go, oh, just close. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. But so mm -hmm. do you feel when 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 it started to close, were were you in a situation that wasn't sustainable of you so I mean like did you you know like the feeling or you know I've got to earn a living and was it because it was sort of getting to a point where it's like or or I don't know did do you feel like if you yeah. if you just continued with it open it would have been okay anyway do you know what I mean so I think it's interesting yes 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 because yes, I know exactly what you mean yes well at the time um I think um people in my sphere were kind of thinking I was kind of crazy. I was making all kinds of big decisions. And I was, I was um, just, I was just seeing this holistic picture and wanting to, to change, to calibrate to that. And so there was kind of this, this sort of maybe outer disapproval. Um, that was one thing. Also, it was like, oh, okay, well, now I've got to figure out, you know, I'm, you know, have to make a living now and all of those worries and concerns. And also, what I know in hindsight is that I wasn't developed enough psychologically to be able to hold those higher energies. They would, you know, I was kind of blasted open by this this shock um, of my whole family system kind of blowing up, and you know, all of a sudden everything that was was no longer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think that I had a lot of work to do around you know, working with past emotional pain that was unfinished, that was unhealed, I had to really dig in. And of course, it motivated me greatly, because I had this experience of opening. And so some of us experience these open feelings through art making, some people, um, you know, take psychedelics, plant medicine to open up that to that wider awareness, I had a spontaneous opening that came from a crisis, you know, sometimes it happens when we're making love or in nature or something like that. But as long as we have a little bit of a template for it or what it feels like to be that open, then then it's there's this deeper motivation to get back to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So incredible. It's like I've not I've not heard of anybody kind of speaking of such such a sort of strong experience, if you see I mean, because I mean that that is an amazing thing to to want to get back to or to anchor to. And for that for that long period of time as well, it's it's mm. quite quite unusual, but but um, but yeah, it must have been very difficult when it when you felt it closing again. It must have been like no. But yes, it was. It was. So, yes, it was. So it was terribly the, difficult. Yeah, and the thing yeah. of like the the um, can't I don't know what's wrong with me this afternoon. <laughs> I'm all over my words. The the impact of people around you and other people's expectations and society and that yes. yeah that I mean that 
definitely has a I mean, it impacts entirely on who we feel that we're allowed to be doesn't it so that and, and if your intuition is is fully open and you're just free to be whoever you want then you're actually in a space where you're ignoring all of those things and but yeah Obviously. Yes. And then when your conditioned self comes back in, which it comes through the nervous system, right? It comes through this sense of, am I safe? Am I not safe? Do I belong? Do I, do I not belong? And so when the nervous system comes back online, which of course it does, we all live in a body, we all live in a nervous system, then, then yes, the depression was devastating. Like I would consider that my life was very small and I was quite, quite depressed before the opening. Well, I was, I was, devastated afterwards because it was such a contrast but then also I was very uh, motivated and very curious as to okay well how how did that happen and of course I've been examining it for 25 years (laughs) fantastic oh very very interesting um so I mean this one of the questions I've asked lots of lots of the people I've interviewed is is how do you know if it's like wishful thinking or if it's your intuition but obviously if for you that that it's such a I mean is it still when you do have when you do have a strong intuitive sense about something do you still feel it quite strongly and or you know I suppose that once you have felt it strongly you probably that's where your awareness would go anyway so maybe it's easier yeah. to tell if it's uh coming from wishful thinking because I think well, personally, I, sometimes I, in the past, I will have dismissed intuition as like, I just sort of dismissed it of like, or oh, you're just, that's just because what that's what you want to do. Or. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have to take a look at that. Like we have to sense into whether it is emotional projection because I, um, I can get really clouded in my intuition because I, I consider myself an empath and I feel like I process a lot of heavy emotions and I always have either in my own, my ancestry the world you know people around me I feel like you know I I have a sort of a lot of emotional stuff to to manage my journals are just filled with that and that's why I just just as an interesting point why I do that sort of daily siphoning off of emotions into my sketchbook because I feel like I, I I tend to accumulate them if I don't and so I think we can get really muddled and I can too um because uh, the nervous system, you know, it, it the body itself holds heavy emotions. And so sometimes they can take you under and you can get very confused. And so sometimes what I have confused intuition with in the past is, you know, what I want or what I don't want, or, um, you know, even if it's something is not good um, or like, we can never set fear from fear in a sense, because we have to question whether that's right, just like we spoke of earlier. But if you're perfectly calm and you're just sensing, I need to walk down this street, not that street, mm-hmm. but you're for coming from a place of calm. It's not fear. It's just the body is saying, no, that's not the way over here. This is yeah. better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming back to the relaxation, isn't it? And the always always yeah softening I love that word softening that's beautiful yes oh, I just wanted to ask so when you in the you talked about emotional like releasing in your sketchbook do, do you is that just is it just that short practice of like ask the question and draw or do you because I find sometimes when I if I if I'm feeling quite emotionally charged and I go to go to <laughs> often I just end up like scribbles <laughs> and, scribble. yes. and actually I, I've been contemplating whether part of it is actually that I never allow myself just to carry on scribbling I sort of stop myself and therefore I don't actually release the charge of the emotion but but yeah I wondered whether you sort of you feel like you feel like you're done with the emotion once you've done your your sketchbook drawing mm-hmm. yes to a certain degree I do you know um and definitely uh, my intuitive drawing practices become simpler over the years. Like when I was more heavily emotionally c- accumulated, I would mm. I would sometimes draw for hours, you know, and lots of scribbles, lots of heavy pen. Again, just the cheap sketchbooks and the ballpoint pen, just because it just felt like anything can come. It's not yeah. precious. It's not perfect. It's it's it, it really um, just being a endlessly recovering perfectionist I need to have a place to be messy Mm -hmm. but um I would say that if I was dealing with a very strong emotional charge then I would I would stay with it until I felt a shift and so sometimes that can take a while and I mean in the early days I would sometimes draw all day even you know so I did a lot of drawing 
in the early days. Now it's just like, it's kind of just like a precious thing. It's like, okay, let's have a little, a little check in and see how, how it is today. Right. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, yeah. So we've talked about, uh, well, I was, I was, yeah, we've talked about feeling connected to your intuition because you, because that, that big experience you said before that you didn't really consider yourself to be intuitive or, mm -hmm. So, yeah, which I think is interesting because um, I feel that although everybody has intuition, we sort of, it gets a bit lost, doesn't it? We, we it gets, as you get older, it gets lost in all the overthinking and the, the sort of, yeah, and the conditioning and other people's expectations. And it's sort of like learning to listen to it again. So, yeah. yeah, it's because our nervous system is set up for social engagement and belonging. And we're so, so heavily conditioned by society. And it it is, it is so real in the body. And, you know, when you get a little escape from that, you get a little open window to that or a bigger open window, like I experienced it, it is, um, it feels more real at the time than, than what's really what, what the normal reality mm -hmm. that we live within, but it's, um, it's quite amazing. It's quite a struggle. And I know that, you know, in psychotherapy, uh, it's all about the nervous system now. And it's all about, you know, how do you calm yourself? Because I don't think we can access our intuition, our true self, our heart, or anything without first regulating and calming ourselves. So it's great that we know as a society that this is this is what we need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You made me think when you were talking then about about conditioning in society is like it's think it's interesting that because in in different cultures intuition is valued differently and also in different like periods of time. And I feel like in our the world that we live in now, it's just got pushed. I mean perhaps perhaps with all of the Perhaps there is a, a, a more re-emergence of, of the recognition of the importance of intuition and, and the existence of it as well, because I think as well, so for so long, it was just, yeah, that's nonsense. <laughs> you're just, yes. you're just yes. sending or whatever, but. Yes, but indeed. Yeah. yeah, very, very true. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, lovely. So we're going to do the, we're going to move on and do the creative practice now, aren't we? So I yes. will stop the recording and then we'll start it again and you can share a little bit about what it what it's yes. about. Okay. Okay. It. Sounds good. Okay, lovely. So Shelley, if you want to um share the creative practice and I'm going to I'll, I'll mute myself, I'll Yes, yeah, fine, I think. Okay. for sure. Absolutely. Okay, so um, this this one is for you, Romilly. I was inspired by your work and your focus on joy. And so I also noticed uh, when sort of getting to know you that you're very into intentional creativity as well. So we're going to bring a little bit of intention and uh, around joy for for this practice. So uh, as you pick intuitively pick your one magazine, I have intuitively picked one magazine. I often just pick intuitively and it always has the right things in it that I need. So this is the one that feels strong for me today. It kind of lights up on the shelf. And so we're going to need uh, a drawing pen uh, because we're going to ask a question on the back of the page or you could use the other side of your sketchbook and a glue stick and some scissors. And so the very first thing that is interesting to do, if you want to be a little bit more intentional about your collage, is I typically, I just kind of go in sometimes as a spontaneous creator and I just see what comes. So some th sometimes things will come from my shadow, sometimes things will come from my higher self. But what's really interesting um, about asking a question of a collage is that it starts to point it in a certain direction. So you can certainly be intentional with collage and spontaneous at the same time. So the question that I thought we could ask for this, uh, for this demonstration is what will bring me more joy? And so you wanna write it down. What will bring me more joy? Now, typically what I would do 
before I turn this paper over and start to collage is I might embellish the letters. I might darken the letters. It's always really helpful to kind of circle and just really, really, really focus. What will bring me more joy? It's kind of take a little bit of time to, you know, if I had more time, I, I might, I might even doodle a little bit, but basically it's, all of this is just anchoring into this question. What will bring me more joy? Okay. Now you can move to the other side of your sketchbook. I'm just going to turn this over and I'm just, now this is the tricky part because you just sort of set a strong intention with our mind, but now it's time to shut the mind off <laughs> because intuition never tries very hard. It just, it just is. So anything that, um, when you're doing intuitive collage, it's really important to choose images and words that light up. So as you go through, certain things will feel kind of neutral. So there'll be no emotional charge. Uh, and so we're kind of looking for, with the back of our mind, just a kind of a light, light asking, what will bring me more joy? I've chosen a really beautiful sort of design magazine for this. And when I do shadow work with people, typically we might work with like a National Geographic or a psychology magazine or something that has um, different kinds of imagery, but you know, this is just pretty beautiful images in here. So, so we're just going to do a very, uh, of uh, just a loose magazine collage. This is more information than really about beauty. So you're just looking for words and images that for some reason, and you don't need to know why, and you probably won't know why, they kind of they kind of catch your eye, this kind of light up. So this is interesting. I just I just found a whole bunch of stacks of books and I love books. So we want this process to feel kind of less logical and more kind of mysterious. And so sometimes what I do to shut down my mind when I do intuitive collage like this, where I'm just looking for emotional information is I'll say a little mantra. And oftentimes I'll say, uh, still mind, I don't know. So if I'm starting to, to, to get too logical and left brained about the process, I'll just go still mind, I don't know. So I'm just looking for things that, that light up. And it's quite easy to do if you just keep it simple like that, if you just sort of just let it be uh, sort of free and easy. Okay. So I mean, I've been doing collage for years and so certain things just really, really stand out for me now. It's, it's not hard for me to, to choose. So you can also just consider maybe opening up the top of your head, just imagining that your crown chakra is opening up and just letting your higher mind choose. I've been really supporting people to choose a lot of words if that feels right sometimes because it uh, really helps the the left logical mind to sort of get it get into the game with intuitive work. Because sometimes intuitive creativity can be so uh, sort of not not really making sense to the logical mind that it doesn't even really let us get to get to doing it. So. Sometimes just to satisfy <laughs> my left brain, I, I just let it have some, some words. And of course, they're spontaneous because they're spontaneously chosen. So for some reason, I'm really, really loving these, these books today. I don't really know why, but it's feeling delightful and surprising. And so we're always kind of really open to the sense of surprise because we're Kind of looking for information that we don't quite know yet. You know, it could be subconscious, and if it's if it's even if it's a little bit of 
uh, negative, uh, the imagery or the words are negative, sometimes that's an indication that the subconscious, something needs to clear before you can feel joy. So, so don't censor, don't be sort of looking for sort of what your, what your logical mind might be thinking is joyful necessarily. Just, just let yourself be surprised. If it feels emotionally strong, then choose it for sure. Ah, wonderful. So I'm getting lots of uh, lots of messages through words. But if your language is really wanting to be um, full of images today, that's fine. And we'll just choose a few more things and put together a quick collage, quick intuitive collage. And just kind of, we'll have a, maybe a little bit of a chat to see, play about that word. Just to see what's coming up. It feels fresh and new. And like I was saying earlier, sometimes information comes from the body as to what needs to, to clear. And sometimes information oscillates and it comes through from from the higher mind to the divine mind which is sort of the higher intuition as to what would bring joy and i have to say to Ramali, one thing that was I, i'm just remembering that's really interesting before i had my my spiritual awakening is um i was really focused on wanting to feel joy uh, very very strongly for many years i was uh, doing these sort of uh, image scrapbooks i would i guess you would say that i was putting beautiful joyful images in scrapbooks and sort of meditating on pictures and i was having a very very hard time accessing joy uh, at the time. And that was a big question for me. So sometimes it's interesting, uh, these higher emotions, like wanting to be intentional about joy or gratitude, or if you have a sort of a higher feeling state that you feel quite intentional about, that helps you open up your intuition too. So, that, so that's really what your work is about. So let's just see one more word. I'm going to cut out and then I'm going to put together the collage. And of course, if you see, I know uh, your work is so full of color, Romilly, and it's so lots of beautiful patterns and so on. So anything like that, you know, if it's your alley is sort of intending that work. But we're, we're definitely looking in this process for a sort of a, a feeling of surprise. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to put together a collage. Not necessarily going to be gorgeously uh, beautiful or anything like that, but it's just going to help me to help me to see what it is I need to know at this time. And so typically with intuitive collage, I'll just place things around the paper first, change it around here. Sometimes I just even just hang things off of the paper. And sometimes not all the words or the pictures will actually fit. Um, once you start working on the collage, it just, you sort of get a sense of what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. And oftentimes the, some of the images and words will go into my next, my next piece. 
and you start to get an intuitive sense as to kind of the, the message that you that your your higher mind or intuition is trying to convey. So I'm just feeling like I need a little bit of spark on this collage. So I'm just going to look for something that grabs my attention. Mm. I'm just going. And if you, I know you, you are definitely a collage artist, Romani, but if you haven't, um, one neat trick is to to have one big image as a, as a backdrop. And so oftentimes just a full, full magazine page as a backdrop kind of just gives it a little bit more depth. I often start with just one big piece at the back. And because I'm very in touch with my growth edge, because I visit it every day, which is, I see the growth edge is coming up from the, uh, the deeper, deeper part of the subconscious, the unconscious to the subconscious, to the, to the growth edge, to the conscious mind. I can already see that these images and words that I'm choosing are very much in alignment with what I'm thinking about. And so the growth edge always sort of just gives you that little bit of information about what you kind of need to know today, what you need to know right now. So okay. And of course, the body because we live in a body, uh, it, it's, it, it resonates with truth. And so you'll start to feel good when you glue down images and words that just feel just sort of right for you right now. So this process should feel really good too. So I can already feel myself feeling more, more joyful with these words and these images and it's quite, quite lovely. And like I said, Romilly, we'll have a chat about this, about our collages after we are done. And um, just see what we can see. But sometimes, uh, like I said about creative practice, you kind of have to live into something for a little while. So if you don't really quite know exactly what everything means, Right now, that's okay. But just, just uh, because intuition, because truth is truth, uh, intuition tells the truth. Uh, you would just want to just keep following what feels good, what feels right. In this case, what feels joyful, just in your placement and your colors. You just go in for the joy. Just going for what feels good, feels right. Now I want to make sure you have enough time there, Romilly, so I can choose a few little embellishments if you need more time. <laughs> no, I'm probably I'm probably good. I lost I lost a word. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Like You'll find it, was, it later. Yeah, it won't be included because <laughs> it's gone off somewhere. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch cameras too. There we go. Well, that one's probably attached to me somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> find it. yeah. You'll find it. You'll find it. Exactly. <laughs> I love those things that fall down. Sometimes that you just find them at just the right time and they go into the right place, you know, yeah. on a painting or something. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's like, yes. It comes up later, yes. Oh, oh, so sure. keeping in mind um, the question, yeah. do you want to share how you see your collage? Well, it's, was it, it's, I'll show you my collage first of all. It's very gardeny, which I yes. I, I have. To, it was a home magazine as well, but obviously it's mostly the interiors. <laughs> so I seem to have chosen <laughs> everything outdoors and green. And, and right. yeah, I think I... Um, it feels to me like a real, like just a real wanting some real 
like comfort but in that kind of you know like not in not an indoor comfort but in that real feeling held in nature that's what which is interesting and I just sort of yeah, yeah it's, beautiful so did it surprise you then does it surprise you that that's what you need or that's what yes, bring it, you more it joy? doesn't it doesn't it does in this I wasn't expecting that today I mean I know that in, I live in the middle of the city and I have I have generally I have a yearning to move to the, to the countryside or at least outside of the city a bit more to see more nature but right. I mean, like, like right now I can I'm looking at my lovely garden which is just through the door yeah. the studios in the garden but but yes I um I wasn't I certainly wasn't expecting that everything I chose it's like oh I, I want another there's another greenness and another <laughs> yeah excellent excellent so you could certainly live into that for the next couple of days and just and see I, if I that just, takes you deeper yeah I'd actually yeah. like to just live in there I think <laughs> yeah and you can <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that was what I was trying to do with my early scrapbook practice when I was, was talking about sort of my mm-hmm. deeper depression when I was in my 20s, this longing and wanting to feel joy was I would cut up pictures like that and just stare at them. And just like they would, because as artists, we're so visual, mm-hmm. you know, we can start to we can start to live right into that imagery. So, you know, that's something that until it feels neutral, it, as long as it's feeling alive for you, it'd be something to really spend time with, you know, to yeah. really look at. Yeah, oh, I feel delight in doing that. I think I'm. I think the whole evening I'm going to be doing that. It feels <laughs> very like I don't know. There's something very simple about very beautiful, but very simple. And I think yeah. that that's like. Yeah. I, that would feel like a nice space to be in right now. So. <laughs> yes, yes. So you can just extend and amplify those feelings. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Absolutely. And um, I'll, I'll just show you mine. So um, I've got the books at the bottom. I've got words, I've got high-minded play, hemispheres unite, which is nice because I'm always working on integrating my right and left brain. But I, what strikes me, uh, you know, I always look for sort of what, what feels sort of alive for me. What feels really alive for me is a sort of worldly woman. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what she means just yet. So um, something about getting out into the world more probably, mm-hmm. um, which is something that uh, is kind of challenging for me because I love my books and I love my journals and I love to just be very introverted and be in my own quiet space. So I'm kind of just looking into, um, you know, it, it all feels a bit mysterious to me. I, I know that when I was uh, preparing for this meeting with you, I, 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 I took some time off of my appointments and I was kind of wandering around my studio and looking at my books and my journals. And I was like, oh gosh, I don't give myself enough time to do this. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious that the books came. And I think that perhaps um, me just coming down and and um, not being very pointed about work and just kind of noodling around and just getting into a right brain space and looking through my old journals and and all of the beautiful books I have in here would be just really good for me right now. So Aww. that's that's how good it comes pointer. Back. <laughs> yeah, it's, really interesting. Mm. it's funny isn't it that it's so easy not to make the space to to actually do the things that you really enjoy and you have them all around you but it's like making making the space to to be with them properly <laughs> yes exactly just a kind of noodle around and just sort of that's yeah. what I yeah just was getting into just, just this very creative space and just opening books and looking and oh gee I'm going to read that journal this weekend and you know just rearranging things and so something about that is feeling good. Yeah. Nice. Great. Well, that was marvellous. Thank you very much, Shelley. I really enjoyed doing that. And I'm really, I'm really looking forward to I might just stick it up on the wall as well. I'm just going to. Yes. So, yes. It feels very nice. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it fills me with joy. Yeah. I Beautiful. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I have my alive intuitive art kind of around me in front of mm-hmm. like, so when I'm, um, doing my sessions I can I can take peek and I'm just integrating it all the time and then I have a box that you know when it feels neutral uh-huh. and I feel like I've integrated it goes in the box and then the new piece goes up so this piece will be because some of it feels so, somewhat mysterious I'll put it over there and I'll just hmm, just take it in it's kind of like digest it you know <laughs> that's a great idea actually so it's like you you spend the time that, it, that you need with it and then it, and then it has a home yeah. To go to. yeah yeah then it has a home and it it, it has a, a period of time where you're kind of living into it it feels alive it feels good mm-hmm. I've got a piece over here I can feel it g- growing more neutral it's going to go in the box soon and this one's over here feels very still very alive and I'm still living into it and 
Do so that's do... part of the practice too. Well, is that the same? Even if because obviously if it's if it's like a joyful one, then it's like it's much easier to do that with. But if it's a more complicated one, do you still do that? Yes, absolutely. Yes, very important too. Very important to do both because um, I think right. from what I understand is that you know in all the years that I've been doing expressive intuitive art, uh, yeah, the the dark collages are very particularly, they're, they're the stuck spots. They're the, the, the spots where we're blocked. They are the places where we feel like we can't go further. So it's incredibly important. And especially with shadow collages or shadow drawings, um, mm -hmm. spending time with them, uh, the intention is... Um, to love them as much as possible because it's like a, a neglected or a wounded part has come forward and said, Hey, I, I don't feel part of the whole. I don't feel um, one with you. I feel separate. And so there's a, there's a big job to do with shadow work around really loving those pieces. And so, yes, they do need to, to do need to go up because the other ones are so inspiring. It's easy yeah. to have them all over, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's always easy to focus on the joy. <laughs> it is, yes, and it's good. <laughs> yeah it's a path it's a path it's a, yeah. it's a definite path that you're on and it's a very valid path it's like you deciding what you want to be intentional about I think yeah. is just incredibly um it's just going to take you everywhere you need to go yeah yeah, yeah. lovely thank you very much Shelley it's been great yes. to chat see yes. you soon see you soon bye-bye